Hey, today is Palm Sunday, and so it is the, the traditional day where we, we read and we, we celebrate and we remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem in the preparation of Holy Week. And so I hope that you are ready for God's word today. And so if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 19, verse 29. We're going to start at, and we're going to look at this story. And I, and I just pray that there's some insight today that's going to leave your life changed as you encounter the message of Jesus. Christ and the word of God today. And so here's how it reads. It says this, as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just simply say to them, the Lord needs it. How many know that's a boss move right there, right? Like if somebody asks you why you're doing it, just say the Lord needs it. And so it goes on and says that they brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in a loud voices for all of the miracles that they had. Had seen, and here's what they began to say Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They'd seen him do amazing things, they'd seen him do miracles, and they're shouting out, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Hey, I want to look at verse 35 and verse 36 again because I want to focus on it today. Here's what it says it says, They brought it to Jesus, talking about the donkey, and then the disciples go first, they threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it, and as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your presence that's in this place today. God, I thank you for your power, God, that is within us, Lord. And God, as we have gathered here this morning to worship you, I just pray, Lord, that you would just show up, Father. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch our hearts, God. Give us ears to hear, God. Give us a heart to receive, Lord. And God, may your word become alive to us today. And God, may we, Father, Lord, be prompted by your Holy Spirit to walk in obedience today. And God, to take off, Father, anything, Lord, that we've put on that is not from you so that we can walk in the fullness of life that you come to give us. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. See, the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem was the start of the biggest event in human history. And it all started with people who decided that they were going to take their cloaks off and lay them down for Jesus to enter into. You see, like, I believe that as we've come to church today and as you've gathered in this room that, that we are here today because there are some situations, there are some heartache, there are some struggles that we've faced in our life that King Jesus wants to enter into today. Like the challenge in God's word is that there are some cloaks that you need to lay down. There's some things that you need to take off so that Jesus can enter the situation. Now, I don't know about you, but I was, grew up and, and was raised in the 80s and 90s. And as, as I was thinking about this concept of some, some things that we need to take off in our life, like I was thinking about 80s and 90s fashion. How many 80s and 90s like, people do we have in the room? You said, that's my, that's my era, that's my, that's my generation, right? And I was thinking about some of the things that we're so glad that we took off that we no longer do from, from that era. Like how many remember this, this era, the fanny pack era, right? How many of you had those? Yeah, you know. Some of you are like, I'm still wearing it, right? So, right? You know, they're coming back, I hear, right? Like, you know, you're like, they're coming back here. And like, I just worn them long enough that they're back in style right now, right? Like the fanny pack air, like, like we had that. Anybody, anybody remember the starter jackets? Anybody have a starter jacket? We thought we were so cool. You'd wear them with like your team on it, right? And you're like, that's my team. I got my starter jacket. How about, how about this style? Anybody do this one? Like the t-shirt over the long sleeve, like with the collar, right? Anybody remember this one? Like I'm kind of glad that we took it off a little bit. And, and that was like the 80s and 90s. How about, how about this one? Like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Rachel, like the, the overalls, the overalls. And you unbuckled one of them for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that was supposed to be cool, right? We took it off. You know, I'm glad. That, hey, we, maybe some of you are still wearing overalls. That's okay. That's okay. No judgment. How about, how about this? Anybody that grew up in that area remember the peg jeans, right? 
you were not cool unless you pegged your jeans, right? And I mean, there was a process to it right there. And, uh, and, you, and you had the pegged jeans. And, and we come through those errors and like we come through these fashion errors and there, there's things that we take off. And in this story that, that we see that as people gather and, and as Jesus begins to enter Jerusalem, we have this group of people who take off a piece of clothing and they lay it down so that King Jesus can enter into Jerusalem. And these individuals are in this moment where they are realizing something special is about to take place. And they have to prepare themselves. See, now most of the time, I think when we read the Gospels and we read the stories in Scripture, sometimes we have a tendency to take ourselves out of the story and, and to, to detach ourselves from the story. And I don't want us you to do that today. I want to remind you in this room today of what Ephesians 2 verse 10 says. It simply says this, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Like, like I want to remind you that you are not exempt from the great things that God wants to do in humanity. Like, you are not exempt from the amazing things that God has in store for your life. He has a plan, and it is a good plan. But here's what I've noticed about our God. It's simply this, that before a season of promotion, there's always a season of preparation. Before a season of promotion, there's a season of preparation. That there's this season that we walk through at times that we feel like God is removing things from our life. But the reality is this is I believe that he's removing things from our lives so that we can make room for the new thing that he wants to do in your life. That God prepares us, and, and in that preparation, he's removing one thing so that he can do a new thing. You could say it this way. When God removes one thing, it's because he's positioning you to receive a new thing. He's positioning you to receive a new thing. So don't be frustrated. Don't, don't be overwhelmed in life when, when something's being taken out of your life because it's simply the way that God is starting to position your life for the new thing that he wants to do in you. Like, like maybe he's removing something because he has something better in store for you. Like maybe teenagers, you get frustrated or you're in that relationship and God removes that boy from your life and, and you're in your senior year and, and maybe God's removing that boy because God is, wants to give you a man that you can eventually marry in your life and he's removing one thing so that he can do a new thing. Maybe God took away that job so that he could establish you in a fulfilling career. So don't get frustrated that that job came to an end. Be in preparation for the new thing that God wants to do in you. Maybe God took away some of your stuff and some of your toys because he wanted to remove greed and materialism out of your life so that you could learn to walk in contentment because he had something new for you. Maybe he removed some toxic friends in your life so that you can make room for some godly community that he wants to establish in you and all around you. Because when God removes one thing, it's because he's positioning you to receive a new thing. Amen. And that's our story today. As the people are preparing for the Messiah, the Bible says they, they brought the donkey to Jesus. And the disciples removed their cloaks and they put it on the donkey. And then as Jesus begins to enter into the city and he goes into Jerusalem, the crowd of people, they too began to take off their cloaks and they laid their cloaks on the dirty, gross, rocky streets so that the donkey could walk on them. See, a cloak is just simply a type of outer clothing. It's a type of robe or a garment. It's not your clothes. It's something that you put on the outside. And it was on Palm Sunday that people laid down their cloaks and they opened up their hearts to allow the king to enter their situation. And I believe the same is still true for us today. That there are things in our lives that we need to learn to lay down so that the king can enter in. Things in our lives that we need to let go of so that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords can enter our situation. And so it got me thinking as I was looking at this story this week, 
Like, what are the coats that we find that we wear in life? You see, because coats come in all shapes and sizes. Like, I mean, they're all different, like, but they're all symbolic of something. You know, for some of you, maybe you wear a white coat because maybe you are a doctor, and you've earned that, and, and, and it's, a, it's a code of, of honor because, because you've earned that degree. And so you're a doctor and you wear a white coat, or you're a butcher because a doctor and a butcher wear the same type of coat, right? <laughs> but coats have so much to often do with our identity and, and what you've done or who you are or, or maybe even what you have accomplished in life like so we have those types of coats like for some of you maybe it's a you know we have these coats like construction workers have right and and they put this on for for safety and maybe you're a construction worker maybe you work the parking lot at victory hill church because that's where i got this one from right maybe you're a hunter and you're just in the woods and you're like hey don't shoot me i want everybody to see me right now and you put this on because it has a purpose. It, it has some type of, of, of something that, is, that you're going to use it for. There's a purpose or a reason that you put on your coat. There's different purposes for coats. Some of us have these things like we have a raincoat, right? And when all of a sudden it looks like it's going to rain, you, you put this coat on because this coat is the one that's going to keep you dry. And, and you don't want to get all wet and you don't want to, I got a hood over my head right now. You don't want to get all wet and you want to stay dry, so you put a raincoat on because it's going to protect you. It's going to keep you safe. So we have all these coats that come in all different sizes and shapes. And the question is simply this. What are you wearing that God wants you to lay down so that you can make room for what God wants to do in your life? What, what is the attitude that you're wearing? What is the behavior? What is the lifestyle? What is the situation that you have put on in your life? And, and, you're, and God wants to move in it. God wants to do something with it. And yet you're holding on to it. And I just want to encourage you today. And I just believe today that if you will lay it down, Whatever attitude, whatever situation, whatever behavior, whatever hurt, whatever it is that you're walking through in life, if you will lay it down, the king of kings will walk into whatever you're going through right now because the king is looking for you to lay it down so that he can walk into your situation. Because he's got more in store for every one of us. So if you're taking notes this morning, I just want to simply give you three coats that we need to lay down in our life. To make room for King Jesus. So the first one is this. Is I want to challenge you. To take off your cloak of comfort. To take off your cloak of comfort. How many like a good bathrobe, right? You go to that luxury place in that hotel. You go to that spa and they give you this bathrobe and you put it on. You get out or it's a cold evening and you wrap up in your bathrobe and, and you're just getting so warm and cozy and comfy, right? Like we love these because we love warmth. We love coziness in life, don't we? We like comfortable homes to live in. Maybe some of you have that comfortable chair in your house and you're like, it's just such a cozy chair. Just feels so good to sit in it. How many of you like some good comfort food, right? Give me some fried chicken and mashed potatoes. And it makes you feel good on the inside. Let's just be honest. We don't like just any cars. We like comfortable cars. Like, like I don't just want to drive any car to get me from point. I want that comfortable car. I want those heated seats and that leather and that heated steering wheel. Because I just want to, I want to be cozy. I want to be, I want to be comfortable. I mean, some of us have like, you have maybe like heated floors in your bathroom. You're like, when I get up in the morning, the very first thing I put my foot on, I want it to be warm and I want comfort in life because the reality is, is we're all looking for comfort. We love cozy, we love warm, and we tend to gravitate to where we are most comfortable at all times. And that's how we live in America, is we seek out comfort. But can I just remind you today, it may be how we live in America, but it's not how we are to live as followers of Jesus Christ. God never calls us to a life of just comfort. If anything, I believe God is always calling us out of our comfort zone. 
He's calling us out of those areas. Look what he says in Luke 9, verse 2 through 3. He says this, And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And look what he tells them. And he told them, Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no food, no money. And look, he even says, Don't even take an extra shirt as you go out to proclaim this gospel. He says, You don't need it. He says, I don't want you to look and to strive to live a life of comfort. I want you to live outside of your comfort zone. And I just want to remind some people today that change starts where your comfort zone ends. Like if you want change in your life, if you want to see your life turned around, if you want to see your relationships grow, if you want to see your relationship with God begin to to take off and to explode, can I tell you where it starts? It starts when you begin to get out of your comfort zone because God's never called us to a life of comfort. He's called us out of those places. He's called us out of our comfort zones. Can I tell you? That's why I'm always challenging you and saying to you, hey, show up and serve somewhere. Well, Aaron, I just don't really like serving. Well, and get out of your comfort zone and go serve anyways. That's why I'm challenging you to give because guess what? It's uncomfortable because you're like, I'm very comfortable in my life, Aaron. I'm very set in my ways. I have ways that I wanna do things and God's saying, no, 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 no. You gotta get out of that comfort zone and you gotta do something different. That's why we're challenging you to get in groups. Well, Aaron, I just like to do life alone. God never called you to do life alone. He's called you to get out of your comfort zone, to stretch yourself a little bit and to follow after him. And he says, I don't want you to take anything with you. So get rid of the comfort areas of your life. And he's calling you to lay down your ideal of comfort. And he's simply saying, hey, I need you to take it off. And I need you to lay it down. I need you to lay it down. He's calling you out of your comfort zones. He's calling you to a place where you begin to share your faith. Well, Aaron, I'm just not that comfortable to share my faith. That's, That's just not comfortable for me. Can I tell you something? If the Spirit of God is alive in you, you've been called to share your faith. It doesn't mean you have to have all the right answers. It doesn't mean that you have to be a perfect vessel. God is just looking for people who are available, and he's saying, hey, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Like, when is the last time you invited someone to church? Well, Aaron, I just, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I just don't know what they're going to think about me, and and I don't know what they're going to say about me, and I don't know if they're going to appreciate the fact that I'm inviting them to church. Who cares? Like, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Like, when is the last time you gave something sacrificially? Like, when is the last time that you gave something and it actually hurt a little bit? Like, 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 like you felt the tension of it. When is the last time you just got out of your comfort zone? Because this is what God calls us into. See, our world is designed to avoid pain and to go where things are comfortable. Like, like everything in our world is trying to, to push us to avoid pain and to be attracted to things that are comfortable. But I need to challenge you today and I need to tell you, stop gravitating to places where everyone always agrees. Stop gravitating to people where everybody all get stretched a little bit, get pushed a little bit, get out of your comfort zone. Do something different because it's in this place that God begins to stretch you a little bit. It's where he begins to develop your faith. And so we got to take our cloak of comfort and we've got to start replacing them with the cloak of sacrifice. We have to replace them with the cloak of sacrifice. Like if you want King Jesus to walk into your situation, into your circumstance, into whatever's going on in your life, can I tell you this? King Jesus walks on sacrifice. He walks on sacrifice. Like our lives were created and we are here in this world to be laid down for something bigger than us. And so we have to take off that that cloak of comfort and coziness and, and me and mine and my world. And we have to begin to put on the cloak of sacrifice and say, God, I'm not living my life for myself. I'm living it for the bigger picture of your kingdom and the things that you're calling me to. And this is the very thing that builds Jesus's church. This is the very thing that builds the kingdom of God. 
And can I just say to you, if you call this place home, if Victory Hill Church is the place that, that you, God has planted you and you are here, I just want to remind you today, if we're going to continue to grow, if we're going to continue to see people's lives change, if we're going to see a community changed around us, if we want to be the type of church and community that is making a difference and lives are being changed and the community is being changed, it will only happen when we live a life full of sacrifice, where we decide that we're not going to get caught comfortable, but we're going to live our lives sacrificially for the kingdom of God. Amen. And can I just be honest? I think we've lost some of that in the church. Like uh, some of you, some of you saints that have been around for a while, you probably see some of the loss of sacrifice. We've gotten comfortable in the body of Christ. I remember as a kid, my grandfather was a minister and, and one of the assignments that he had was actually to be an overseer over hundreds of churches and, and to, to lead pastors and to lead churches and they would host uh, an event called camp meeting every year. And camp meeting used to take, uh, take place on these campgrounds and it was an open air tabernacle, right? Anybody remember those days? Anybody go to anything like that? Yeah, right? And, and people would gather and they would have, in the middle of summer, in hot seasons, they would have hour-long services. I mean, no air conditioning. I mean, they would just stay at garage doors. They'd flip them up. Bats would be flying around. I mean, it was crazy. But people would come, and they would come by the droves because they, they, they were like, hey, we're going to come to meet King Jesus. And as time's gone on, can I tell you, we've gotten comfortable in our churches. And I mean, half of you guys complain if it's too cold or too hot in the current sanctuary we have. I'm like, what if you had no control over it? Like, like, like we've just gotten so comfortable that we've, we've stopped learning what sacrifice is. And I love all the things that we have and, and the new ways that we have to reach people and the comforts that we can have as we gather into a building. But can I tell you, the church is not built on those things. It's built on the sacrifice of people who are willing to lay their lives down. And for 2,000 years, this is what's built Jesus' church. It's been and will be the sacrifice of the saints willing to lay down their lives for whatever Jesus wants them to do. And it was the original 12 disciples that set the standard. It was these individuals that Jesus sent out and said, hey, I don't want you to take anything for your journey. I, 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 I want you to be prepared to go and to sacrifice. And it was the original 12 who would give their lives for the gospel so that the gospel would be spread and so that Jesus' church would be built and the kingdom of God would advance. Like the original 12 set the standard of what it looked like to sacrifice. Look at their lives. The Bible tells us this, that, that we're, it's believed that, there, that Peter was crucified upside down. And this was after Peter said to him, hey, I don't think I'm worthy enough to be crucified in the same way as my Savior. If you're going to crucify me, then you need to at least crucify me upside down. Andrew was crucified. James, the son of Zebedee, was killed by the sword. John, the Bible tells us, was boiled in oil. And he was actually the only disciple that they believed that died of old age. And can I tell you something? I don't know if I would want to survive being boiled with oil but he survived and he died of old age later but he faced extreme persecution Thomas was speared to death Philip was another disciple who was hung upside down Jude was crucified Simon the zealot the Bible the, the, the history tells us was sawed in half Matthew was stabbed to death Bartholomew beheaded Matthias stoned to death James son of Alphaeus clubbed to death beat to death this is what happened to the original 12 disciples why? Because they chose that they weren't going to live their life for a life of comfort, but they were going to live their life for sacrifice, and they changed the world. And if we want to change the world, we're going to have to pave the way for King Jesus. If you want to see our cities transformed, if you want to see this county transformed, then we better pave the way for King Jesus to walk into Lancaster, to walk into Fairfield County. And can I tell you what he walks in on? He walks in on the back of sacrifice. When we simply say, God, whatever you want me to lay down, I'm willing to lay it down because I'm getting rid of my comfort and I'm picking up the cloak of sacrifice. Would you give Jesus Christ an innovation of praise in this place. So take off the cloak of comfort and put on the cloak of sacrifice. The second cloak that, that we oftentimes put on is we, we have to take off your cloak of recognition, right? We have one of these, a varsity jacket, right? You had your varsity jackets and you're like, yeah, I made the varsity basketball team. 
I'm on varsity baseball. Look at my, look at my recognition. Look at my honor. We, we walk around so much in life trying to get people to look at the things that we've accomplished. And we live in this world that is all about us. And yet this is the very thing that Jesus calls out other people about. It's the very thing that he would call out his disciples about. And it's the very thing that he would call out the religious leaders about. That they, he would look at these individuals who were all about recognition. Look at who I am. Look at what I have accomplished. And here's what he would say to them in Matthew 23 verse 5. He would say, everything they do is done for people to see. And they make their fallacies wide. And the tassels on their garments long. Why would they do this? Because they was a place of honor, is a pre- place of prestige. And Jesus calls them out. And he simply says to them, you do this in order to bring attention to yourself. You put these on your robes so that people will look at you and think that you are something great. And you are seeking your own recognition. But Jesus says, that's not how I want you to live your life. And can I just remind you, it's dangerous when we become the focus instead of Jesus being the focus. It's dangerous. It's dangerous when we try to bring the attention to ourselves instead of trying to lift up the name of Jesus. Scripture actually says if Jesus would be exalted, if Jesus would be lifted high, then he would draw all men unto him. Like our goal has to always be that I'm not living my life for my recognition, but I'm living it to exalt the name of Jesus. And it's dangerous when we come focus on ourselves. Instead of Jesus being the focus of our life. You could say it this way. If you live for the praises of men, you will die by their criticism. If you live for the praises of men, you will die by their criticism. If you live for their compliments, you'll die from the criticism. And so many of us were living our lives to say, hey, look at me. Like, why aren't you acknowledging me? Why, why don't I have your attention? Or like, why doesn't anyone recognize me? Why doesn't anybody build me up? Why is anybody talking about me? And you're wearing a coat of recognition that has the ability to kill you. Because guess what? It will cause death in your life. And the reality is this, is you have to find a new definition of what your life means to be a success. Like your life can't all just be about the accomplishments, the awards, the things, the stuff that you have obtained in your life. We have to find a new definition of what it looks like to have a successful life. And I think it looks a lot like this, that my success is not dependent upon my ability to achieve. My success has already been determined because of Jesus' ultimate achievement on the cross. And when we begin to understand this, that it's not about my ability to achieve. Achieve, but it's what's already been done for me, then we're not fighting for our achievement. We're leaning into the fact that we serve a God who has already achieved all that we need him to achieve in our life. And so we don't lean into ourselves. Instead, we lean into him. And the reality is this, is we have to take off our cloaks of recognition and we have to throw them down and we need to start replacing them with the, rec- the cloak of humility. We have to take off the cloak of recognition and we replace it with the cloak of humility that we get to the place where we begin to say it's not about me it's not about my name it's not about how many people I have as followers on Facebook or Instagram it's not about our successes in life it's all about King Jesus we have to live our lives this way that's why first Peter 5 verse 5 would say this all of you not some of us all of you Clothe yourselves with what? Humility towards one another. Put on the cloak of humility. Because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Like God wants to step into your situation. God wants to step into your circumstances. But the reason he doesn't is oftentimes is because we're too proud. Like, it's because we think we can handle it ourselves, and we don't even invite him into the situations of our life. Because we want the recognition. We want to be able to say, look at what I have done, instead of look at what the Lord has done. 
And we've got to begin to live our lives with humility because God opposes the proud. Like he's not going to walk into your situation where there's pride that abounds in your life. You've got to submit yourself to God. Because he doesn't, he opposes the proud, but he shows favor to those that are humble. He gravitates to those of us who walk and live our lives in humility. Because God's not impressed with your ability. God is attracted to the humility that you possess in your life. So let us be a people. Let us be a church that recognizes that without God, we are nothing. We are nothing without God. And so our whole life has to be lived to make everything about Jesus and nothing about us. And so we lay it down. We, we throw off our recognition and we throw off our desire to be acknowledged and we begin to walk and to live our lives out in humility. And the final thing is this, is we need to take off your cloak of yesterday. We take off the cloak of yesterday. So the reality is, is that so many of us we're walking around and we're wearing our mistakes, our issues, our struggles, our pain, our hurts, our failures. And what we've done is we've put on the cloak of yesterday. And we've become defined by our past. Like the reality is, is probably everybody in this room, you've been through some stuff. We've been through stuff. We have mistakes, we have failures, we have struggles, we have issues. And we're walking through life and we're wearing all of it. We're, like, we're wearing our trauma. We're wearing our failures. And it looks a little bit like this. We're just ragged. And it's the cloak that we've put on. And we've got to learn to take off our cloak of yesterday. It reminds me a little bit of an individual in the Bible by the name of Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind. And it simply says this in his story. It says, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. And look what he does. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What does Bartimaeus do? He takes off the one thing that has been defining him for years. He takes off the one thing that was his protection when it was, the weather was not good. It was the warmth that he had. But when Jesus calls him, he takes off the one thing that has defined him. And he takes it off and he throws it to the ground. And so often, we make our issue, our identity about us and we wear it around. And Jesus is simply calling to you and saying, come to me. Like, like, come to me. And so the proper response when Jesus calls us is to take off our yesterday. And we decide that, you know what? I'm not going to hold on to it any longer. I'm not going to allow this to define me anymore because you can't look backward. Think about this. You can't look backward while trying to move forward. So many of us were holding on to yesterday and we're looking backward and yet we're struggling to move forward into the things that God has on us. And, and we're thinking about, man, those days. Man, that job, man, that was, it was so great. Man, that marriage that didn't work out. The, those friends that I once had and you're looking backwards and you're looking back to all the things that were in the past and yet God is trying to call you forward into the moments that he has for you now and he's looking at your life and he's saying, I know you've been through some stuff. 
I know you've got some hurts. I know you've got some pains. But, but I also know where you can go. And until you let go of what was, you will never take hold of what would be. Until you let go of what was in your past, you will not take hold of what would be. That God has a life for you that's so much bigger than what it was. So you have to let go of it so you can take hold of what he has prepared for those that he loves it's bigger than you can imagine but you gotta let go of yesterday to be able to take hold of what Christ has for you today would you give Jesus Christ an ovation of praise and so you gotta forgive you got to let go of that and stop wearing that around everywhere. And you got to be willing to let go and you got to be willing to forgive. Let go of that anger that you're holding on to. Let go of that hurt. Get over the past. Some of you that are sitting here, you need to let go of some church hurt in your life. You've allowed something that's happened in the church or by another believer hold you back from moving forward into the things that God has for you. Let go of that anger that you have from that divorce. Like, like God has another healthy marriage in your future, but you're holding on to that anger so tight that he can't bring it into your life. And you'll never see forward if you're always looking backward. You'll never see forward. And so we have to replace the cloak of yesterday with the cloak of expectancy. Like that I'm expectant of what God is going to do. That I'm hopeful for the things that he's going to do tomorrow. You've got to get some expectancy in your life. Like if God tells you to lay something down, don't be frustrated in it. But man, with expectation, go, man, if I'm laying it down, it's because God's preparing me for a new thing that he wants to do in my life. And so I'm not laying it down begrudgingly, but I'm laying it down with the spirit of expectation that, man, God is going to show up and move. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says this. I'm going to take the oil of joy instead of mourning. And some of you, instead of the, the mourning and the grief that you walk in, you need to experience a little bit of joy in your life. But look what he goes on and say, and he says, and I'm going to put on a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Like he's like, the writer says, I'm going to live in such a way that there's so much praise in my mouth that instead of the heaviness of the past, I'm going to lift up the greatness of my God. I'm going to put on a garment of praise instead of a, a spirit of heaviness is what the Bible says. And I'm going to get rid of that. And the only way to get rid of it is to take it off, to throw it down, and to let the King of Kings walk into your situation. And when you allow him to walk in, watch what Jesus will do. When you take those things off in your life, what you're doing is you're paving the way, just as they did on Palm Sunday. You're paving the way for King Jesus to enter into your situation. And can I remind you, some 2,000 years ago, when he walked into that city that day, they didn't fully understand what King Jesus was about ready to do, but, but they allowed him to walk into their city. Situation. It was by giving his life on the cross that he brought hope and joy and peace and the forgiveness of our sins. And there's new life, there's new future, there's new purpose for each and every one of us because they paved the way for Jesus to come into Jerusalem. And when you lay down whatever it is that God is asking you to lay down, you are paving the way for King Jesus to enter in and to do the miraculous, to do the supernatural, to bring joy and peace and hope into your life like you've never experienced before but you got to take it off and you got to pave the way for King Jesus to enter in give Jesus Christ an ovation of praise let me close with this story I was thinking about this honestly last night I was just like kind of dwelling on this a little bit more I love showing pictures of my boys this is Landon and Jackson this was several years ago I miss them that small most days. Most days I do. In this picture, Jackson's got this, this blanket. It was actually a blanket that 
we got it when Landon was born, and he used it for a while. So this blanket's been around 10 years. Here's the thing about this blanket. It's gone through some stuff. Do you have any kids that their blankets have gone through some stuff? But Jackson is so attached to it that we can't get him to let go of it. And here's what the blanket looks like now. It's not much of a blanket. It's more like a cloak. <laughs> like this is it right here. And he holds it up and I'm like, dude, there's nothing left of this. He'll put it on some days and it's like he wears it like a cape. He wraps it around things. But how many know, like, there's no more washing this. Like, it's not, it's going to be destroyed. So it's got stuff on it, right? And all the time, I'm like, bud, let me get you something new. Like, you don't, like, we have other blankets. I promise you, church. But it's become so attached to this that I can't get him to let go of it. And as his father, I wish, what I want to do for him is just take it and fix it and mend it and wash it and clean it. What I want to do actually for him is I want to give him something new. And I think the same is true of our Heavenly Father today. That whatever situation and every hurt and whatever thing you've dealt with in life, some of you, this is your life. and This is what it looks like. And you're so holding on to it in your heavenly father saying, would you give it to me? And I promise what I return back to you will be so much better than what you let go of in the moment. Because that's the heart of our heavenly father. So what is it that you need to take off today? What is it that you need to let go of so that King Jesus can enter in? Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? What is it that you need to surrender today? What cloak do you need to take off? Do you need to take off the cloak of comfort and pick up the cloak of sacrifice because you've just tried to live your life to make it easy? Do you need to take off that cloak of recognition? You've lived your life so that everybody would just recognize you and for the accolades. And maybe today you need to put on that cloak of humility so that God can enter in your situation because he opposes the proud, but he gives grace and favor to those who walk in humility. And maybe for some of you, you need to take off the cloak of yesterday and put on the cloak of expectancy because your heavenly father has some, so much more in store for you. And so we're going to take it off and we're going to pave the way for King Jesus to enter in. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Would you open your hearts up for a moment? Would you just simply, where you're at this morning, would you simply say, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want to speak to me? What is it that you want to do? And I believe the Holy Spirit will quicken you. He'll prompt you. He'll lead you in those things. Because there's some things in this room that you need to take off so that King Jesus can enter in. So we're going to close with the song and we're going to take some moments of worship. And I just want to encourage you in these moments of worship that you would just allow your life to be prepared for the work that God wants to do. And that there may be a season of preparation that God's trying to take you through because there's a new season that he has in store for you. And when you let go of the one thing, it's because he's preparing you for the new thing that he wants to do in you and through you. So Holy Spirit, we just make room for you today. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you, Lord, that you speak a life over us. God, I thank you for the fact, Lord, that you want to be in relationship with each and every one of us. 
And God, I know in this room, Lord, there are things that we need to lay down, Father, that's holding us back from seeing you fulfill everything that you have for us. And so, God, on this Palm Sunday, God, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our lives really are prepared, Father, to experience the joy and the victory and the power of what the cross was all about. And that, God, today, before we leave this place, Lord, that we will lay down those coats, lay down the coat of recognition, lay down the coat of comfort, God, lay down, Father, Lord, the coat of yesterday, God. And God, that our hearts would be awakened, Father, to the great things that you want to do today, here, now, and in our midst. So God, I pray over every heart and every life here today. And whatever it is that you're calling us to surrender, may we stop holding back. And God, may we let go. And may we let our Heavenly Father have it, knowing that what he returns to us is so much far better than what anything that we've given up. So God, may we take it off. And God, may we walk in your love, your grace, your mercy. And God, may we walk in the power of your Holy Spirit in every area of our life.